a man on a mission, I'm just walking with this purpose Patience is a virtue, but success to me is urgent Window of opportunity, and they trying to gun pull these curtains I'm putting on the clinic, can I show you that for certain? Don't you measure me by stats, won't be another statistic All the way in them nose, please hating me from a distance Quality over quantity, doing it with precision Trying to play my position, walking it like a Christian I just told him, take the wheel, I'm Today with us on Stool Talk, man, it's an honor to have uh, producer extraordinaire, minister, husband, a uh, man of God uh, who's really been putting his heart, putting his all into his work and has been showing through the music. Today we have with us Mr. Paul Anderson. How you doing today? Yo, it's an honor to be here, man. Honor to be here on Stool Talk. I'm doing well, man. Thank you. Yeah, so how did this journey begin with music? Like, where did it start? Man, you know, with music, oh, man, it really started, to be totally honest, you know, and a funny story, it really started with Drumline, the movie Drumline. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, when I grew up, what, that came out, like, 2002, 2003 or something like that? Um, I just remember me and all my friends when we when that movie came out, everyone wanted to play drums. Like I wasn't really into, I took piano lessons when I was younger, but when that movie came out in middle school for me, I, that was it. Like I wanted to start doing music and I wanted to start with drums. And um, it really kind of ventured off from there. And we've talked about this before. I was um, at a church and had a youth church there and um, we it was such an amazing encounter that the worship was kind of like that was happening in the worship. And I remember they were playing. I think at this time it was like, I give myself away. Um, Hillsong, like that was, was Hillsong. It was a song uh, that Hillsong had out. It was really popular. I don't I can't think of it right now. But it was a mixture of all these worship, these really good worship songs. And I remember the person who played keys, he moved to college. And when he moved to college, like all of the worship kind of like died down, kind of stopped. Mm. And something in me was like, yo, we got to get this worship. We got to get this atmosphere back. And I mean, I'm in middle school. I don't even know anything about it. But I just, I just had a desire and uh, and a love for seeing people gather and worship and i knew that the keyboard was an integral part of that mm -hmm. and from there like i just started learning songs man i didn't know <laughs> i didn't have anyone teach me i just started learning songs youtube university this was back in 2003 2004 i just started learning songs and telling hey y'all come up to the church we gonna practice yeah. And they're like, wait, PJ, you play? Well, my friends back home, my friends back home, but my friends from like like church family, early church family, they call me PJ. Okay. Well, you play piano? <laughs> <laughs> I do now, you know, I can yeah. play songs. And um, it kind of started from there, man. I know that was a long um, explanation, but that's really where it started, um, truthfully having that desire to see worship, dude. <laughs> but it, it, it's something that you had that in the inside of you instilled inside of you at a young age to even know that, to even know that worship means something, that worship, worship sets the atmosphere because even in your growth until now, it's important for you to make sure everything is together so we can get that same kind of um, praise, that same kind of worship, and that atmosphere could be thick because – who at a young age in middle school knows about praise and worship and can know about the anointing. So that's just something that God put inside of you. Um, what was your early sign that you knew that God was real and that you had like an encounter or you seen faith work? Dude. Oh, such a great question. <laughs> um, you, First of all, you're absolutely right, dude. You know, it's the Lord. It's God. You know, I, I truly think, man, like, you can see signs of your destiny um, at a young age. Like God just kind of show you these little signs, you know, some people might call them checkpoints. And um, yeah, that's something that, you, you know, it was, it was working in me, but I didn't even know 
<laughs> I didn't even know what it was that was working in me. Um, and I think probably one of the first times I was like, man, I know, I know God is real. Hmm. Well, there's, there's also a couple checkpoints with that too. Around that time, I will say, um, huh, you know what? Let's do this. Perfect. I remember in, in college, same actual situation. My goodness. I was in college and I was invited to play for this, this youth group called the Vibe. And that, that the Vibe actually is now a church now um, led by Pastor Philip Mitchell. Um, but I remember going to this place and I'm like, man, I want to, I want to have, I want to, uh, play keys. And they actually invited me and I didn't have a keyboard. This is real true story. Mm. This is a true story. What I'm about to tell you, I didn't have a keyboard. And I remember saying, man, saying to the, saying at this church service, like, Lord, I, I, I want a keyboard. And the, and the pastor preached on ask, seek, and knock. He preached on, hey, asking the Lord for something and, and waiting to receive it, waiting to receive that very thing, being specific about what God, what you want from the Lord. And I asked the Lord for a specific keyboard. I, I want a Yamaha Motif 8. Mm. This, is, this is real. And I remember praying with faith. It was just that faith in the room, praying. I wasn't even... Actually, I don't even think I just came to check out the service. I don't even think I played that day. And I remember just going home and I'm like, okay, I'm praying. And somebody calls me the next day and was like, hey, um, you know, I got this piano, this keyboard, but it wasn't a motif. It was a rolling phantom. It was like, I got this keyboard, you know, do you want to use it for, you know, whatever? I was like, it's just sitting there. This person they knew I was a I, I was a musician. And I was like, yeah, sure. And I'm like, Lord, this is it. And I'm going to try to speed up the story. But I said, Lord, this is it. And I was praying, praying, praying for the Lord to put on their heart to give me this keyboard. <laughs> and, uh, and it turns out, I was like, are you good? You know, they end up not giving it to me. A couple days later, I remember that somebody asked me to come to another event. Actually, it wasn't an event. It was like a studio session. And I was like, I didn't want to go because I forgot that they, they told you know, I, I forgot that I agreed. I was like, man, I don't really want to go to this. <laughs> and I get there and I'm playing on the very keyboard that I asked for. Mm. And when I left, when I left that meeting, they the I was walking out and he was like, hey, man, do you have a keyboard? I was like, actually, I don't. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> He's like, why don't you take it home with you? And I was like, what? <laughs> and, and, and from then on, I met him a couple days later. The Lord told me, hey, this is your blessing. Act like it's yours. And I immediately went and got a case that fit that size keyboard. The next time I saw that, that guy, he said, oh, you got a case for it? It's yours. Mm. So you just activated that faith. And moved on. It was a act, and when I tell you that was the first time I was like, "Whoa!" Where God answered a specific prayer, yes. very specific. And when I tell you, if I you you believe me, I know you will, because you're a believer, you're a man of faith. But since that keyboard that I had, all the other keyboards I've had up until like very recently, I never paid for. Wow, I never paid for. The keyboard up until then, like people will buy me keyboards and then I'm at trade that one in and get something else. And then 2020, I traded in a keyboard and then um, somebody gave me another one. And mm. it's like, and I thought I wasn't going to have one and I end up getting one. So, man, I can go on all day, but that that's probably the first time. Wow, that's that's amazing to see because like sometimes God do uh answer our prayers, but it's on his time and it ain't when we want it to be or he wanna see if he can trust you because you could have easily gave up, like, oh man, it ain't gonna happen. And you know, through a pity party or whatever, but you stay humble, you stay trusting in your faith and he opened up them doors. He do. He he did, he did. And you know, 
I guess what? I only had a little bit. Yeah. Only a little bit of faith. Cause I when that when that when the person said that they weren't gonna give me that keyboard, I was like, man, I guess I guess that wasn't it. But then when it came to that other request when somebody said, Hey, can you come to this thing? I was like, I just said, you know what? I'm just going to be faithful to what, you know, when I'm supposed to do my obligations. Turns out that's where the blessing was. And, um, yeah. you know, yeah, you know, that's just how the Lord works, man. That's just yeah. how the, when you experience those things, it's like they're checked. They're so important because it helps you with your faith walk. It helps you yeah. to see, I know the Lord's ways. I know how, I know how the Lord's going to. You know, you might not know every way, but you know how the Lord moves. Yeah. Like what he responds to, you know. And you're going to make me preach, man. You know, scripture <laughs> talks about, like, you know, without faith, it's impossible to yeah. please, to satisfy um, the Lord, to satisfy God. And, but, but guess what? All you got to have is mustard seed, though. If you could just say, hey, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, or like, yeah. Lord, willing. You know, like, Lord, if you're willing, just help me. You'd be surprised. Wow. Did the ministry come next or did you start in music? Did you have a group? You know, because you can sing as well. So did you start off leading and singing praise and worship or did the ministry come first or did it just come a combination uh, together? Man, dude. Um, so after that, that's another great question. After that, because you asked about ministry. Like that's kind of been like for my in my life, it's kind of been a very interesting thing. Just kind of like the back and forth. Cause um after I got, you know, this keyboard and just start playing, the Lord did, he did call me to say, Hey, start this ministry, start this youth group. I had started a youth group in college. It was called Blessed and Highly Favored. Amen. <laughs> and uh we would travel around to different churches. We would actually this is when I was um I was Seventh Day Adventist. I actually grew up Seventh Day Adventist, okay. and uh, we went around a different Seventh Day Adventist church. But I still, um, really, really like, you know, we still had this just this youth and this vibrance, you know, that we wanted to that we needed to have to kind of like bring in this you know presence of the Lord just through worship, not just like with you know just rigid, yeah, you know, songs and hymns stuff. We wanted to be vibrant, so. I think that's kind of what started it. Like the Lord just put it on me. Like once I got saved, all of that kind of just kind of merged in together, man. It merged in together. Like we, you know, I started this group and, and after actually not that far after that is when I came to embassy. Okay. At Apostle Meadows and believe it or not, um, me and Apostle Meadows used to have classes together at Clayton state and, <laughs> Yeah, we used to be in the same class. We had the same math class. I think wow. we had a class together. And um, that's kind of how our relationship started. Um, it, and the ministry, I I feel like that's just something that, like, it's just kind of been on my life. But, like, because of music, you know, when you're doing music, you kind of, like, want to be focused on music because you want to be the best musician that you can. So when it comes to, like, speaking and all that other stuff that the Lord can use me through. I've kind of put that down, but it's just been something that's stirring in me for whenever the Lord, whenever time, whenever it's time. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think that's what's um, amazing about you because you got the ministry inside you, but you still can do the music and you still can be relevant in the music. And that's how you can be able to win souls, but you, you quiet you know, you humble, but you still effective. Shout out to Pastor Stephanie. Um, and then as a man finding the wife, he obtains favor. So, you know, that's what makes y'all dynamic together because, you know, she on fire. You know, when she get going, it's, you know, so, so when I heard you ministering and singing and all like that, I'm like, that's just different levels of the uh, ministry that he got, the different, um, you know, things that God has instilled inside of him to be able to release, you know, but like you said, it's God's timing, but um, it, it's amazing because you allowing it to be when God wanted it to be. Sometimes we, 
God tell us to do something and we ain't came out with it. We ain't produced it. We ain't taught. We ain't God told us to minister on this. We ain't did it. But he gonna have it to where it could be effective because a lot of people need to hear what you gotta say, especially in this. Christian hip hop because a lot of people they're not getting mentored, they're not getting ministered to. So they respect you on the music as well as the man of God that you are, so they can hear it because it's real. You ain't coming, um, you ain't putting nothing shiny on it, you being transparent and you bringing it to their level to where they understand it. So that's what makes you very unique. And I just want to tell you, just keep going with it because you need it for a time, you know, like this. And and, and it's it's important. Even the people in the crew, even like the youth ministry there, they see you, they recognize you as well, too. So it's just the your light shining, you know, and that's what I think is unique about you as well. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That I, I I that means a lot. I accept that humbly for, for sure, bro. Um yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep rocking it. And you know, um you mentioned my wife, Pastor Stephanie. You know, we've been on this journey together with ministry. You know, the amazing thing about that is, you know, amazing thing about Stephanie and I, like we've when we met, we, we there was no ministry in sight. And to see how the Lord has taken her and has like, like just, I don't even know how to, how to, how to describe it, has really just crammed this, this assignment, this gift, this anointing into this woman who if y'all know her past, if y'all know where she came from, you'd probably be like, well, she doesn't talk about that much. But to me, that is what's so amazing about how she carries herself, how she ministers, how she does and leads, is that y'all wouldn't even know the stuff that she has to deal with and she comes from on the back end. And and the, she's been obedient, submissive to the Lord, and, and the Lord's just been taking her places. So, yeah, man. It's it's been a wild ride. It's been amazing though. Yeah. Um. So, did you start producing when you came to Embassy, or when did the producer side of you start? Um, dude. Uh, production. <laughs> so I would consider myself more of a songwriter. Okay. Like producer. Um, like because I started out as something else. I actually started out with poetry. Before I was doing music, I was actually into poetry, spoken word, heavy. And you'll That's see why you so dope on the, what was it, the soul case you was up there? Oh, no, 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 I did seven last words. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. like hidden, I feel like I'd be like, Lord, what am I going to do with all this? And then not even saying that in a arrogant way. Like, I'm like, Lord, I'll be really wanting him to, like, help me, like, line these things up, but. I started off with poetry and spoken word and, and that when you add the music onto that, that just kind of turns into songwriting and production. But um, I think just kind of creating sounds kind of came from that really came from like, uh, when did that kind of start? When I was, when I got saved, like when I really gave my life to the Lord, that's when the Lord started downloading songs like I wasn't just like a music, like just musician, just playing in church. I, the Lord was downloading the songs, and I have, I just always have wanted to write songs for for people to sing. Um, since I became a musician and start playing, and you know, gave my gift to God, like I've always wanted just to have songs written. Like um, it started off, I think. Let me see, my first kind of like big break not break, but just kind of like opportunity. Well, one, I, I was writing songs for myself to sing. And then, oh, so there's a song right now. If you go on iTunes right now, the first song I actually published was with me and Pastor Ozzy, Ozzy Brown, um, back in two, 2012. Yeah, 2012, called Let It Fall. And we actually sung it for praise and worship. Um, once or twice, me actually, me, Ajin, and, and Apostle wrote it together, and we would write songs. Actually, you know, with Apostle at his house, like we would write, we wrote a couple of songs together with him, and um, 
He be, apostle, you know, apostle won a Grammy. He secretly wants a Grammy. Actually, I don't think it's a secret. Like he, <laughs> he said, he's probably said it a few times. He won a Grammy. He's trying to find his way to it. So, uh, we've written songs together, and that's just kind of how it came in. Cause like you know, when you're a songwriter, you gotta make the demos sound good. So when you yeah. pitch to other song to artists, they will be like, "Oh, I rock with it." Cause some people might not just rock with the you know the one inch the piano and vocal. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes they kind of want to hear the song like kind of how it would sound. Yeah. And that's that's really how that came to be. Would you say you like writing the uh, music or um, singing and performing? And which one would you say you like doing best? Definitely writing. Writing, like, you know, singing and performing. That's kind of that's really vulnerable. Uh, we don't mind being vulnerable, but if you give me a mic, I would rather probably speak or yeah. something. You know, we we'll see. I'm saying we'll see. I don't know what. Yeah. How do you navigate the balance in creating, writing songs and music that resonates with uh, a broader audience today by staying in, um, you know, the lane of a Christian and not going outside the box? Oh, man. Um, man, I really don't have a, of an issue with that, man. I know we've talked like, I don't know, the type of music that I am writing and I'm creating, like, I try to, I'm not even try, like I'm, I'm expressing yeah. what's out of my, my heart for the Lord. Like, this is what I feel like Christian artists and musicians struggle with today is that wrestling, like Jacob, like Jacob and the Lord and the angel of the Lord wrestle. Uh, most artists and creatives, they don't wrestle long enough to where <laughs> to where there's like their name has changed and something yeah. about changes like when and when Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord there was this entanglement and I and I actually talk about this the sound of the kingdom sound of the kingdom is actually the sound of entanglement is where you're who you are and who God is to you there's it becomes it becomes one like it's a it's like a a perfect um it's just union. I don't even know the best way to say that. And that comes out in your music to where it's like, I don't have to make a genre. I don't have to make yeah. music. I don't have to do that. It's going to be authentic. I think you come to your most authentic self in your music creation and your creativity when you 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 surrender, you know what I'm saying, to the will of, to like, to, to like God, like, like having like total surrender, like for him to come inside of you and and speak through you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of how I balance. Like now, sometimes you be writing and you get into your feelings, right? You know what I'm saying? You get into your feelings and you want to talk about A, B, and C. You want to talk about <laughs> and I I think you can write those songs if you got to get them out, but maybe, you know, be mindful of, hey, is this going to help somebody this is yeah. gonna bring you know what i'm saying so that's how i balance that so even as a songwriter you would say that you really prophetic in your writing just kind of like our worship sometimes is prophetic as the lord put it on your heart as he downloads it to you but that's what that's gonna make it unique and um you know it can't be copied because the holy spirit gave it to you you know, and and that that's what makes our sound at our church different. That's what makes the embassy live label different because you can tell, like we talked before, um, you can see the oil that's flowing. It ain't looking just like everything else. You know, you can dress a sheep up in a pig or a pig and dress them both up. They still going to be a sheep or a pig, but you still know the real because the oil is a flowing and it's the anointing that breaks the yoke and you know causes people to submit causes people to fall on their knees causes people to want to give their life up because they see it and it's not just a show you know and, and when you keep on doing that your artist ain't gonna do nothing but keep on resembling you because the music they gonna have to because if they don't fall in line they can't be able to sing or be able to perform the music because it's not gonna line up bro Dude, 
You saying, hey, look, and and I'm I say that I first of all, you're absolutely right. The the culture of embassy worship and just the house, yeah, it fuels that man. Like the prophetic culture, like that's that's in our DNA. Yeah. That's that's in the DNA, you know, and um I'm I think one thing about me, you know, although I'm like I'm a creative and I'm I'm leading the label and you know and and that takes that takes a lot, you know, that takes character, that takes um a lot of effort. Yeah. And things, and, but I will agree with you, you know, like when it comes to like worship and when it comes to putting music together and putting songs out there, it's going to be, it It has to be something that's going to, it's got to be anointed. It's got to yeah. be creative, excellent. And it's like, to me, the, my favorite songs are the ones that like touch the heart of God and touch the heart of man. Yeah. And like, not just like doing something just to make people feel good, but it's also at the same time. Like it touches God's heart. It touched heaven. It touched the hem of his garment. It's like, yeah. hey, God say, whoa, what'd you say? You know? <laughs> yeah. It, like those are the types of songs I love. Yeah. I love the songs where, like, it, I love the type of songs where it's like, it brings you to a place where it's like, yo, I'm at the feet of Jesus. You know, it brings you to your own encounter. Like you get, you take your encounter. And you're able to capture that, write that, articulate that. Yeah. That's good. That's good material. That's good material. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> how, how, how do you, um like, with you and Trey and all the musicians and all like that, how do y'all make sure that y'all are staying on board and y'all got everybody close together and everybody is staying close and they connected to God to where y'all can be on one accord? Because I know it's supposed to be one band, one sound. Um, so if somebody else ain't in alignment with y'all, it can throw things off in the spirit and, you know, playing in the natural. So how do y'all do to keep y'all unit together and close? Man, um, I think it, I think uh, like it starts with the culture. Um, I think it starts with the culture because it starts with like the architecture. I know I'm not trying to be deep or anything like that, but it starts literally with like the foundation that's already set, right? Like we already know every song, every time we mount the platform, it's an offering. We already know. And guess what? We lay this on the alt. We lay this on the altar. Like we want the Lord to, to respond. Like that's our end goal. Our end goal isn't like to sing some songs that make everybody, you know, that make us look good. Come on. Our end goal is not songs that just for us to look good. It's the end goal is for the Lord, for God to respond, and for um, the anointing to be released for glory. Like, yeah. because there's one as there's one level where the, the anointing is released. Right. But then there's another level where glory is released. And, you know, the scripture talks about um, in first Chronicles. Um, I think it's 513 where, you know, the glory of the Lord came um, and the priest couldn't stand to minister, you know, where everybody was doing their they were ministering. Everybody was playing, singing, and they came to a point where, like, they couldn't minister no more. Mm. Nobody could say a thing because because of the glory of the Lord had showed up, and it cons and it was um, they yielded to that, and it was it, it filled the room. And I think that that's always that's at the foundation of you know, and it's the culture. We know that, like, hey, we're not coming in to come and just do a cool song. And and I think that's, you know, that shows up in our music, like how we play. Cause like when it gets to the end of a song, guess what, we still pushing. Yeah. We still pushing. And I I think the musicians that come in, they, they realize like, oh, oh, we going for something different. <laughs> we not, oh, we not just here that boom, get, get your check, you know, be out the door. Like, they going for 
they're going their goal in worship is different yeah. and i can't tell you how during worship we know where we're gonna go and it just kind of all flow other than you know you know the md talk back i think a lot of it is is spirit led you yeah. know so you yeah. know yeah. Um, can you discuss the importance of the lyrical content today in the CHH, um, even with the youth being able to pay attention to what they're saying and to lead them the right way versus um, just out there rapping, just to be rapping, but you a Christian hip hop artist? Like, what is the importance and what would you say to that? Because um, everybody is coming to the CHH. We kind of talked about this, too. People is trying to come in the CHH, just trying to ride that lane. But it's important that their music and their words and their lyrics is saying something because you still have the youth that's gravitating towards that and you don't want them to be confused. So what would you say to that? Dude, um, yeah, bro, like you said, we talked about this. Um, <laughs> the lyrical content is, is important, man. Like, it's super important. And, and it goes back to what you said earlier about some of these artists, and not just in the CHH, you know, in worship culture, they don't have pastors. You'd be, yeah. you know, I, unfortunately, in the charismatic church, that is um, something that we kind of fail to do. We fail to, we fail to disciple and pastor the most gifted. Yeah are the most gifted and her sh and show show the most gifting they for some reason in our mind we're like oh they don't need they got it <laughs> they're good up here they're good in here oh they don't they're they're fine Woo. and i think that if this 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 is what i'm trying to say man if it can happen in the pulpit where the pastors and the, and the worship leaders and the, and the elders, when they got some stuff that they're struggling with and still go up there and preach, you best believe that those who are not in the pulpit, <laughs> no matter how much they on social media they're saying, ah, ah, yeah. No matter how much, you best believe that they, they also need discipleship, they need prayer. And um, I think if you're going to be rapping, if you're going to be giving lyrical content, man, I think it's due. I think it's totally important for, for it to be laced with the word. Yeah. Like you, you can't lace nothing better. You can't be lacing nothing better. And they go back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, the sound of the kingdom being, you know, interwoven with your with your life and with your mind, will and emotion with your soul. Like, that's the best type of, like, this is another thing. If you rap it, guys, if, if, I don't care, I, whoever here it is, let's rap with revelation. Yeah. Let's start, let's start rapping with revelation. Let's start rapping with revelation. Like, let's not, let's not just have songs that, that don't come out of like I understand sometimes you gotta feed the algorithm, you gotta keep writing, writing, writing. But um let's rap a revelation, like let's walk with God. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like let's walk with God and like and let's give something that can edify the people, edify the body. And then I'm not saying that that's everybody, but because there are a lot of really, really amazing um, you know, artists and rappers out there who I love, man. Shout out to all of them. Mm -hmm. you know, Shout out to Sada Southern Yankee. Yeah, man. shout out to Sada. Sada Southern Yankee, man. I've seen this dude. I've seen him walk with the Lord this past year. Yeah. Come in with a testimony and the Lord take him through a journey. Yeah. He'll show up like, dude, Lord, this hurts. And I don't even have to know his. I don't even know, but I can just, I can just see it. Yeah. And um and then you know that's gonna give you that's gonna give you your lyrical content. That's gonna give you your testimony. Yeah. Let's wrap up testimony. 
Because when I first when I first interviewed him and he was telling me how he had just started, he had just put out a couple uh singles then, and now he had almost had like ten or eleven. This was three or four singles then, but just to hear how he stayed trusting God and God was allowing him to be used because of his faithfulness and God seeing that he could trust him even in this new lane to be able to open up doors. God already knew he was gonna get signed to Embassy Live. He didn't. Yeah. He just kept on going and trusting God. Lord, what do you got for me? You know, getting prayed over, people prophesying over, and you know, and just trusting it. And like you said, walking in it. One thing that we talked about too is like you said about the residue of these rappers and what they're saying. Cause I was asking him, I said, Man, I've been listening to some Christian rappers and I I just had to double take and kind of rewind it because some of them be cussing, you know. Oh. And he was like, Yeah, but as a real artist, he was like. You know, if you got a cuss in your lyrics, you know, and you can't take a cuss word out and you can't say something without cussing, like what kind of lyricist is you? You know, that's how you can tell. Just like the game did a song with D1 without cussing. You know, and the game is different and, it, and the song still sounded cool. So it can be done. But, you know, a lot of people don't really think about that because they ain't getting mentored. They ain't getting Tutor, they ain't getting like, hey, they ain't getting caught off for what they doing. And, you know, when you're dealing with the spirit of excellency, like, you know, you guys and all like that, y'all already got a standard. When you set a standard and, and it's all about the standard and personal agendas and pride is out the door, then everything runs smooth. A lot of people, you know, they riding with the artist and I hope this artist make it because he make it, I make it. When when it's spirit led and when everything is just in the spirit of excellence and decent in order, God going to, you know, make a way. He going to cause a provision. He going to breathe on it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, man. hundred percent. Absolutely. hundred percent. Like, you know, people also don't realize, like, you only need one song. Yeah. You really only need one song. And if that one song is like your, like, kind of like your intro breaker song, you know, maybe get two or three. Yeah. But you really only need one song, man. And um, I going into, like, the business side, if you realize, like, all the things that are required to – you know, now we're in the 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 era of independence, right? Where like anybody can release music, like you can release yeah. music on your phone, like. But if you really realize, like how they did it before then, and like the reason why, like we have so many classics now, then, and we don't have classics now. You know what I'm saying? Is because there was a lot of processes for you to get that song out. Yeah, and if it wasn't right then it could cost you money. It could cost you a lot of money. Yeah. Um, I think that artists should put that in mind. And even if I'm thinking about that with me, like lately, I'm like, man, if I'm going to say this is the song, I want it to be, I want it to, I want it to be the song. And I know too, you got to get your, you got to get your reps in. However, try to keep him, try to keep that in mind. Like, if you're gonna do if you're gonna do a joint, let it be one of the best representations of you and like your gift. You know what I'm saying? Like, because you never know which one gonna be that one yeah. that God breathes on. You know, um, we went to the Dove Awards in October, and the the guy Brandon Lake who won Worship Song of the Year, he got up there and he said he was like. He was like, when he was in the studio, he was about to release it. And literally, it was he sent it to the label to be released. And then he turned around and was like, no, it's not right. And I think he said he went back in the studio, redid all of his vocals, redid it like two or three times, did redid music. And then that song that he spent so much time on mm -hmm. ended up being the song of the year. Wow. And um, And that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, Sometimes you really only it's only need one, and um, that God can breathe on it, man. So, yeah. You know, What's your process in you picking um different artists that uh you guys sign to the label or that's affiliated with the label or that you guys even work with? Um, process, man. It's really through relationship. 
Okay. It's through relationship. Um, we have, you know, since we're a, a new label, I feel like I should have my hat. I feel like I should have my, la my label hat on, man. <laughs> but uh, we're a new label. And so we're just kind of going based off relationship. And also, um, you know, seeing, you know, if, if you know, if our staff, our team can support you. Yeah. Um, we, if you're, if some artists like, hey, they're kind of like maybe too, not saying too big, but like they're in a, a realm where we might not be able to support them. Um, and maybe just, just people we might work with on, on a feature or, you know, vibe check, bringing in, bringing folks in for vibe check. But it's really, it's really based off relationship, you know, Cy, you know, he came and joined the church, you know, and I think that's a big part of it, especially as being a church label, um, being a, a member. Um, so that way you have the culture of the house. So if we're, we're, so we're like family. So there's going to be a level of trust there because we know that you know what we about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what we about because you're here and you hear Apostle preach, you hear our team, and you worship with us. So I think that's that's a very big part of how we, uh, uh, you know, of how we deal with artists and choose artists and things of that nature. How was the journey with getting it started? Was it a lot of blood, sweat, and tears? A lot of praying? A lot of like, what, what was that process? This is a whole label we talking about. This ain't just no, I'm gonna do this and that. It's a whole label with a name, a brand, a sound, you know, a face. Yeah, dude. dude uh... You you saying something? You saying something? I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, pat myself a little, <laughs> just just a little bit, not a whole lot, just a little bit, because I don't think I when you said a label, I'm not. I have never gone into this with thinking that it's just some type of like, hey, mom and pop label. No, in my mind. We we are we want to be just like all the like elevation worship Bethel you know one one six all that we want to operate in as much of a capacity that we can like full capacity. Um, so when I when we're when I put the team together, um, that's what I've been thinking. So you know we started off in twenty twenty actually November twenty twenty, um, just I think it was seventeenth and seventeenth. 14th and 17th, we actually launched in a movie theater. Wow. Um, really, really dope, man. Um, and the reason why we started, because um, Apostle and I talked about this. We said, hey, you know, we released Possess the Land and started doing really, really good. Like, you know, we had our first million streams in a couple months. And um, we was like, hey, we should start a label. You know, that's kind of been a talk that Apostle and I have been discussing for years. Um, and, and, um, we decided that 2020 would be the best time to, to do it. And once we, we started, um, and we're still kind of in the starting phase to me, but once we started, the first thing we knew we needed to do was to sign Anna, Anna Linnell, Pastor Anna, um, and get her an album. Right. And also to continue to do singles with MC Live, um, it's really to to be totally honest with you, bro. It's been a learning experience. It's been trial and error because this is entrepreneurship at the at the very base level, but it's also been ministry, yeah. and so it's a lot of trial and error. It's been a lot. It's learning people. It's learning how to deal with deal with, uh, you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Learning how to deal with them in different arenas and different aspects. Um, and I. I have, I have been very grateful, truly, um, that Apostle and First Lady have given me the leeway to do it um, as long as I have. This is year three. We just came up on year three. And like I said, we, we signed Anna. <laughs> we, we released a, a, a project with her. Um, we've signed Cy, first Christian hip hop artist. We've released... Um, a uh, live pride we did a, a live recording mc worship um actually two live recordings we released a, a music video yeah um, 
done a few writing camps. We launched a, we launched I'm, I'm, this is my wording, the number one source for Kingdom Creative Talent, Soul Case. Yeah, we yeah. launched that, you know, and um, and we built it. We're building a team. We're building a team. We're coming up with label services. We're educating. I'm edu. We're we are educating our team on how to uh, operate in the business and, you know, do that in house. Yeah. If I can be honest, even some more, I would say that starting label is pretty ambitious. It's a pretty ambitious goal, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, like who you think you is starting the whole label, right? Like, but I don't, I don't know, man. It's just, I'm just going as the Lord leads, bro. Like, it's it's really been good. It's like it's a lot of risk, yeah. ability, but um, when when God comes through, like this last soul case, having one K few perform, seeing all the stuff that's come from it, yeah, like the connection, and then we released Temple. We we did you know what I'm saying start doing vibe checks, and you know, we we've been stepping out and. God's been faithful. He's just been meeting us. Look, he's giving a little, little, little hey, keep going. Hey, yeah. Keep going. Like, yeah. I some stuff I can say, some stuff I can't say that the Lord has been like showing his faithfulness. But he has, man. And and yeah. Last two questions. Million dollar question right here. Yeah. How do you yourself being balanced uh what do you do to make sure that you are uh charged up and that your capacity is full and that you're connected to god being that you're a husband you're a man of god you got a ministry you're a father you know you still need time for yourself but you're pouring into the the church uh as far as the ministry the labels even writing and stuff like that what do you do to keep yourself balanced and energized as so you can be great wow uh, bro man look yeah, listen, hey, if you got anything, I love it. Listen, we had I feel like that could be a collaborative effort with just our brothers in Christ. I but I do feel like I'm the most balanced when I do three things. When I have moment have when I take some time out, of course, to worship and, and pray during my lunch break. When I wake up in the morning. And I and I um, prioritize my time to, to work out, and um, and I take some time to show gratitude and and look at my goals. Um, I, I said that I've given myself if I can do those three things every day, and I'll be okay. Um, <laughs> am I that you know? Am I that consistent in it? Eh, you know, we still work it, but <laughs> um, those are three things, man. Like I. I'm telling you, I know for a fact, like, they'll change, probably change a lot of people's lives, but I know me personally, it, when I do do it, I'm I'm straight. I'm great. I, I mean, I'm feeling, I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling, like, filled with, like, the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? Filled with God's love when I worship and pray. And on the and on like the end of that, I'm feeling energized because like I'm taking care of you know my health by exercising. So I might need to do like a 90 day challenge or something like that. Take for myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, that's how I, that's that's when I feel the most balanced for sure. Yeah, um, and one thing I think that's dope is that you. Um, you are able to allow people to showcase their talent, like you said, to showcase with the vibe check. Bless that. You forgot to say that. <laughs> but yeah, but so you're making a platform for people to come and be able to perform and show their gift that God, you know, gave them and to encourage them as well, because y'all could just be so and like we're gonna keep all our artists, it's all about our artists, but y'all don't do that. You're allowing other people to come in. Y'all sowing seeds and them seeds that y'all sowing in the mother artist's life is going to be blessed because best believe they looking to see how Embassy Live artists do it, to see how y'all doing. Like you said, them nights they leaving the soul case, they thinking about it. Like, man, this was dope. Like, I wish I could have that. Now they want connection. Now they want community. It's going to cause them to start coming to the church, to start being around it because y'all already affiliated with a lot of different people, just like Side Big Rissa. They know a lot of people and they know that they connected. They listening to uh, Apostle B. 
you know, they own the Brian Maddows app. So, you know, they're getting the word and they're going to want to be connected. So that'll lead them and draw them into us, you know, and that's one thing I think is dope. Man, do you, you saying something right there. And, um, you know, I guess like ultimately like that's, that's, that's it. It's like, especially like the pastoral side of me, like it has yeah. to be, as the disciple has to think about artists, not just as artists, but as, as souls, as people who, who need, you know, who, who need someone to walk with them um, and be with them. And, and, and to be honest, that's probably what I re request prayer from, because sometimes I get caught up in my assignment. I get caught up in just, you know, trying to be my best in terms, in terms of my assignment. But, um, I realized, man, like that's really the that's really the main goal, you know, is that um, is that folks that come our way that I encounter, they're 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 brought closer to the Lord. Like, you know, they you know, there's chains that break off of them. There's some type of benefit, you know. Um, and and so, yeah, I um, that's that is the main goal. That's the main goal. And, and you know, Soul Case has been that. Yeah. Has like I I agree, man. Soul Case has been that. Soul Case has been like crazy because I don't even sometimes realize the impact of Soul Case. Sometimes <laughs> I'll be like, "Yo, oh y'all rock with it. oh like this last one we had like the most submissions that we've ever had, and um and I know this next time is gonna be even more because you know folks are able to see what it was like, but um yeah the the ministry. And this was a great class question to end on. I don't know if you have another one, but that the ministry is what it should be at the forefront because you can get caught up in the business. You can get caught up in the business of ministry, but like touching someone and praying for them, ministering to them, prophesying to them, interceding for them, you know, teaching them the word. That's priceless. Like yeah. I get, I can help write you a hit song. I could give you the the you know, I can help put you on tour, but if I don't do that, if I don't pray for you and, and show you and help bring you closer to Christ, then you know what am I doing? You know. Right. Do it. Yeah, man. We thank you for joining us, man. We just declare and decree blessings on you, your family. Um, your finances. We allow God to continue to restore and impact you and be able to allow you to be able to get used in a way that he see fit. Allow him to be able to elevate. Uh, I see elevation in your life, in your label, in your ministry. Man of God, you are needed for a time like this. May you be uh, obedient to what God is saying. May you have the strength and be bold as a lion to be able to preach the gospel, to be able to minister the gospel, to be able to win souls for the kingdom. And may you not be afraid because God is going to be with you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Amen. Yep, yep. Amen. So continue you. to do the work and continue to do the work. And where can everybody check out the uh, uh, embassy official? Yeah, uh, check us out, man, uh, at M uh, at Embassy Live Official on Instagram. Um, Embassy Live, just Embassy Live on Facebook. And also, EmbassyLive.net. That's our website. Um, we have a few things that we're about to roll out. We actually sent out some of those things, too. If you're on our mailing list, if you came to Soul Case, you might be on our mailing list. You might have got an email from us from on Black Friday. Um, with all of our label services that we just rolled out. So uh, be on the lookout for that. We're trying to help artists in a major way with that too. So, yeah. It's yes, been great. Keep looking for them uh, them videos of you ministering on the keyboard and you uh, ministering to us because they much need it, bro. You don't understand. Like I said, I tuned in several times when you did it and it helped me. So, you know, bro. I'm just keep on going. God, I will, man. You the capacity to be able to know how to do it like he did with the man when he gave the talents. You were able to, you know, be diligent with your talents. You ain't just like, I don't know. you like, shoot, I got all of these. Lord, what you going to do? So you allowing God, you giving it to him, you know, give myself away so he can use you. And that's where it's at. 
Come on. <laughs> Yo, and one still talk. <laughs> yeah. It's on all the podcasts, man. Yeah, yeah. all the podcasts. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yes, sir. Thank you, bro. This was an honor. This was an honor, man. Thank you. And then uh, everything that we talked about, I'm keeping it, keeping it close to the chest. <laughs>